Let's talk about logarithms and natural logarithms. You ever seen, you ever feel this way when you solve a math problem three times, get a different answer each time? <laughs> oh, that's sad. But if you've been following my videos in order, you'll see that we've, we've been learning about exponents. And let's just revise one important thing. Let's say I have two to the power of three. What does this really mean? Let's actually talk about this meaning here. This two is called the base and this three is called the exponent. This is important because we have another way of writing exponents. We have a, a way of actually converting between exponents and something else we call logarithms. It's just a different way of writing this same idea. And it may seem crazy, but I promise you, this is something that actually has uses in everyday life. We really do use log scales all over the place. Well, maybe not all over, but there's lots of examples. So let's first just discuss what is a logarithm. It's a different way of writing things. This is actually what shows up in your formula booklet, so let's write it like this. Good news, because I've been calling things a base, well, logs have a base as well. And then we'll say log base a of b, and we can call it x. And they go like this right here, they say that is the same thing, they write it like this, like this is the same thing as saying, let's see, it's a to the x equals so this right here, you don't need to memorize it, but it really helps to learn how to use it. In fact, if you use logs a lot, you really will end up memorizing this. Just Well, you'll memorize how to use it. Let me explain what I do here. So we have this thing called a logarithm. We write log for short, and we'll say a. This is the base. And the way I remember how to do these, remember the way I remembered at least how to do it when I was in high school? I remember thinking, oh, log base a, that's just like this base of an exponent, right? So watch carefully. It's like this thing to the power of this thing equals that thing. Notice, a to the power of x, see, it's right there. So a to the power of x equals b. So it's like you go this way, a to the x equals b. This is an important sort of pro tip here, is that if you're not told what the base of an exponent is, uh, not base of an exponent, base of a logarithm, then it's 10. So for example, maybe I had something like, um, I'll tell you, hey, log of five. Well, that would actually be log base 10 of five. They just didn't tell you. So if you're not told the base of a log, it's 10. And that's going to happen quite often. So this is the, the most important thing right here we need to know, this thing called log. And it's it sounds a bit weird, but let's just get right into it. We'll see if we can deal with things here. Let's see if we can deal with this. So this is simplifying. We want to do log base 2 of 8. We want to do this by hand, ideally, without a calculator. But I'll show you how to do it with a calculator as well. So the way I think of this, I'm going to use this formula. Remember this formula here? Maybe I'll just rewrite it here. So log base a of b equals x is the same thing as saying a to the x equals b. Okay? a to the x equals b. So what I like to do is I use this idea, and I just start writing things in those terms. So this right here, I could say, now here's the problem. I don't have like what it equals. I don't have a letter here to make it equal. So watch carefully. I'm going to make it... I'm going to pretend it was like equal to some box. I don't know what to put. I could call it x, I guess, but I'm just going to leave it as some unknown box. So if I use this form, look, take the base. The base is 2. So I'm going to say 2 to the power of that, whatever that is. Remember, the rule is supposed to go, at least the way I've shown you, go this to the power of this equals this. So I'm going to say here, whoops, I'm going to say 2 to the power of something equals 8. See, I'm going this way, I'm going like this. Just a reminder, I'm going 2 to the power of this equals this. So because of that, then I'm going to say, ah, well, that equals 8. Can I think now, does 2 to the power of something, can I think 2 to the power of something equals 8? Well, 2 to the power of 2 gives me 4. Let's try 2 to the power of 3. That means 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is 8. Hey, that works. Notice then that that right there is the answer right here. That was my, my box, so to speak, needs to be 8. Therefore, the answer is just 8, uh, not 8, sorry, 3. So that's what goes here. Right? 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. Once you get used to it, you'll see it go a lot faster. I just want to you know, take baby steps here and help you out. Same idea here. Well, we're going to set it equal to some box, which I don't really know. Right? That'll be my unknown. I'm going to go 10 to the power of blah equals this. So let's do it. So 10 to the power of something 
equals 10,000. If you know your rules of powers of 10, you just count the number of zeros. It's really easy because 10 to the 1 just has one zero. 10 to the 2 is 10 times 10, which is 100. So that's why you just go, uh, it's actually really easy. Just count the number of zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, fine. Then I know that my box then has to be 4. That's uh, what goes as 10 to the 4 gives you 10,000. Same thing here. Ooh, they didn't tell me what the base is. So what do I do? I have to be clever. I know, aha, nice try. That's a 10. And I'm going to set that thing, of course, equal to the box, like this right here. And I'm going to say, all right, fine then. So 10 to the power of something equals 100. Let's see if we can figure that out then. So 10 to the power of some box something equals 100. Well, can you think 10 times 10 gives you 100, and that's the same thing as saying squared. So 10 times 10 is 10 times itself two times. So this 10 to the power of 2 gives you that. Now if you're not sure how to do this, let's actually open up a calculator and see if we can do it. So just to show you, you easily can do this sort of thing. So if you want to do log, do you notice at least on my TI Inspire, do you see this log is in blue right there? So I'm going to go log. Notice it already has the base here. So I'm going to say log base 2 of 8. Guess what? Boom, it's 3. Do you see how easy that was? Let's do log base 10 of 10,000. Right, so we'll do a similar thing here. So log, and this time I say base 10 of 10,000. And just to show you how easy this is, it's 4, see? And same idea here. Except here, because they didn't tell you the base, you did have to be smart enough to know, ah, if they don't tell you the base, you've got to make it 10. Your calculator needs you to put that in. So you put in 100, and you get the answer. Hooray! So that is logs. If that wasn't weird enough, now we have something else. I'll explain this in a second here. We have something called an exponential function. So that is a graph of, you might have heard of exponential graphs. Whoops, that's a really, really bad axis. I gotta draw this nicer. So this right here is some sort of, uh, I'm gonna just try to draw a graph of some function. The function is actually called e to the x. That's actually what this exponential function is. So that's something called e to the x. So I could say like, you know, well, to make it a function, I'll make it f of x equals e to the x. This is not a constant. Like if you take physics, e is the charge of an electron. That's not what I mean here. Uh, what I mean here is this is a function called exponential function. It's like saying sine or cosine. It's something that does something. Let's actually see it on our graph, see if we can do that. So let's generate a graph of e to the x. So I'm going to open up a new page. I'm going to say graph. I'm going to say give me e to the x. Do you notice I have it right here? And by the way, here's a pro tip for you. I don't know if you knew this, but 10 to the x is undone by logs, like they undo each other, while e to the x and lns are opposites, just like x squared and square roots are opposites. It's kind of a nice little trick for you here. But uh, if I just do e to the power of, and I'll just leave it x, and I do a graph. This is what it looks like. It's exponential. So it does this, okay? So it goes up like this. So let me try to just roughly sketch that. So I'll go like this. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. It'll be something like, you know, like that. And this right here, this value is 1. Turns out that's really special. So HLs will go into this in great detail. And SLs, it's good enough to just go like this. Say, this is the graph of e to the x. What's interesting then, uh, y is when I make x 0, guess what happens? e to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 is always 1. So that's kind of nice. But what's interesting is, what is e to the 1? That actually might be nice to know. Like, what is this e? It's one of these really weird numbers we call irrational. You can't write it as a fraction. It doesn't repeat. It's something really strange. Watch. If I say, um, I can do it, I guess, here. You know what? I'll, do? I'll actually I'll do it back in my calculator page here. I'll say, what's e to the 1? That's the same way. So 2.71828, but it's only approximately. 2.71828. It keeps going, it has no pattern, it doesn't repeat. So just so you know, this right here is something really, really important. This is like what e to the 1 is. And e is something that's irrational. You can't write it as a fraction. It's like pi. It's one of these weird numbers like that. So it's actually really special. For uh, HLs, when you're doing uh, derivatives, you're going to learn something really important about them. It turns out the value of its y is the same uh, like at a given at a given point the value of its y here is exactly equal to its gradient at that point. And over here, you know, it's higher up, and it's also steeper. So it turns out it is its own gradient. It's really cool. But uh, let's talk about something called a natural logarithm then. We're going to relate then logs and this weird thing called e. A natural log 
Okay, we actually write it as just ln. So I'm going to write it like this right here, maybe like this. I'm going to say we actually write ln. Why isn't it nl? Mm, well, I know at least in French it works a lot better. We call it logarithme naturel. So it's, you know, it's a natural logarithm. But it's ln. Some people just call it ln. I don't know. But it turns out natural log of x is just a log with a base of e. This is something that's really, really important. Okay, you need to know this. This is something very, very helpful. Okay? So natural log is just a log base e. That is super important. So we we're talking about different bases, how you can have a base whatever you want. Or you can make your base 10, or you can make it 2. Well, you can make it this weird letter called e. And if it is, we call it natural log. That's why this dumb thing about the forever alone, if you know that dumb meme. Look, log base e, forever alone. Get it? Forever a natural log, because natural log. Ha, 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 ha. That actually is really cute. <laughs> All right, so let's look at what is the natural log of 1 equals x. Can we find x? Well, we could just rewrite it, couldn't we? I just want to show you how we could do this. So we could say, all right, well, I know that the natural log of 1 is the same thing as saying log base e of 1 equals x. Like This is the, this is the same thing as that. Okay, they are the same. So I've just taken this equation that looks really weird, and I've made it something I can deal with. Because remember that trick with exponents? If I take a log base something, I say the base to the power of this equals this. I'm going to do just that. Watch. Whoops. I'm going to go right here and say e to the power of x equals 1. So I'm going to follow that little, that little path there. e to the power of x equals 1. So that's the, going to be the important part. So e to the power of x equals 1. Now you got to think e or anything to the power of something has got to equal 1. I don't know if you know about exponents. But did you know that anything to the power of 0 always gives you 1? So that's how I know that x equals 0. Because e to the 0, anything to the 0 gives you 1. That's the only way to get a 1 here. Well, unless you do 1 to the 1, I guess. But uh, if it's got e like this, if I say e squared, it's going to be totally different. e to the 1 is totally different. Remember, e to the 1 is this. So e to the 0 is the only way to get a 1 here. So that's why the answer is 1. And the reason why I put this down uh, this is just an example, which is nice, but for HLs, it really helps for you to know this, that a natural log of 1 equals 0. That's sort of the conclusion we make. This means therefore. So this is therefore a natural log of 1 equals 0. I'm going to have another video right after this that's going to go uh, deeper into examples of this, and we're going to actually see how we can do something kind of good, like uh, you know comparing earthquakes, for example, with log scales. So we'll see how to actually put those in practice.